All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about this Harley Reid hype situation. Now, if you're particularly if you're living in Western Australia, or at least subscribed to the West Australian on Facebook, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Obviously, Harley Reid has probably seen a degree of hype for a draft prospect like we've never seen before. That is indisputable. And this video is not so much, you know, me coming to the staunch defense of Harley Reid, although I do think some defense would be warranted considering what is being said out there. But I kind of want to more just discuss what we're seeing out there, make observations about what's happening in the media landscape and observing the pendulum swing of public opinion. And honestly, it's, it's getting quite silly. So. Uh, I actually thought of this video because I saw a segment on SEN Sports on their YouTube channel, a discussion between Sam Edmund and Nathan Buckley. And the last little bit is uh, discussing whether Harley Reid has been overhyped. And to be honest, like watching the segment itself, I didn't really take too much exception with what was being said in there. They mostly concluded, you know, the hype is disproportionate and uh, I would agree with that. I know I've made Harley Reid videos myself, but I'll go through exactly the extent to which he's being hyped. Further to that, I saw an interesting update as well. Peter Sumich has actually resigned from writing for the West Australian. I know, what a tragedy. Um, and this was on the back of him writing an article about how Harley Reid was no Chris Judd and the West Australian blocked it. They didn't want a article that was potentially critical of Harley Reid. I do kind of see both sides of this. Now, on the one hand, I'll give Sumich some credit. I think what his intention with this, uh, with this particular article was to suggest that let's not talk about Harley Reid like he's Chris Judd because he hasn't proven anything to suggest that he is the next Chris Judd. And I think that is a reasonable take. However, I do consider the impact of what an article like that would have. And I do think it would probably come across as critical of Harley Reid, particularly in a week where we've just seen him play a preseason game where he didn't touch that much of the ball, produced two eye-catching highlights for the record, but still obviously didn't have the impact that, say, a Dacos or a Sheasel did when we first saw them play in those roles. So the timing of that article would have probably come across poorly, and you do have to factor in that the average consumer of AFL content, God bless you all, I love you, I think my audience is great, but we're talking about across Facebook, across the entire football community, they don't tend to be that discerning. So an article like that would have come across as anti Harley Reid. And I understand the West Australian wanting to interject in that and being concerned about how that would come across. Now, on the other hand, the West Australian is absolutely guilty of plastering this kid all over their, both their social media and you know the back page of the West Australian. Like it's getting ridiculous. Now there is an important distinction I want to make here. I do feel like there's some sort of sentiment out there that West Coast and the West Australian are working symbiotically. Is that the right word? I hope that's the right word. Colluding almost, as, as though this hype is being generated by West Coast. Now, West Coast, when they drafted Harley Reid, rightfully in my opinion, plastered him all over their social media on the day of the draft and maybe a little bit after. It's a good news story. We've landed the best prospect we've ever seen, but since then, the actual coverage on him has probably been from the official West Coast media channels similar to what we've seen from Clay Hall and these other new prospects. Matthew Flynn's got his own video on the YouTube channel. My point being there is don't necessarily fall into the trap of thinking that the West Australian and West Coast have the same interests here. They do not. Now, previously, there has been this belief that the West Australian was very pro-West Coast and somewhat dismissive of Fremantle. And to be honest, I think that is very valid. And I'll, I'll put up a picture here. This is the back page of the West Australian, the day Fife won his second round, or the night after rather. And he's probably getting less like page area than Junior Rioli who had just tested positive for the drug scandal. That is a big story, don't get me wrong, but now Fife's just won a Brownlow medal and deserves to be the predominant part of the back page. So I get that. I think that is wrong. But you know, if you've been paying attention you know, intently to what the West Australian has been saying over the last few years, it has been quite anti-West Coast. And I mean, going above just simply criticizing the club for being bad. There has been some attacks that I think have bordered on silly, you know, Mitch Woodcock and Adam Simpson having their feud and Peter Sumich in particular going after Simo Fall, in my opinion, ridiculous things. Criticism is warranted, but sometimes it's just, it's clutching its straws. So my point here being the West Australian's inflation of the Harley Reid hype has absolutely nothing to do with the interest of West Coast with the interest of Harley Reid, it is all about driving clicks and engagement. As a content creator, I can understand why he is, you know, plastered in the way that he does because they live and they work in a industry where clicks and engagement is the key metric. And obviously putting certain players and certain teams all over, you know, socials and, and their articles does generally lead to achieving the KPIs that they've got. And I get that but it doesn't make it okay because what they're doing directly or indirectly in your opinion 
is inflating this guy to the point where it's potentially going to lead to his downfall. And what is also happening, there's an effect that's happening in the mind of the readers as well. The more you hype someone up and the more you inflate their importance, and especially if it seems unjustified, it creates this resentment, this rejection in the mind of the reader, in their psychology. We saw this happen with Nick Natanui, where Nick Natanui got criticized probably more so than any eagle that I can remember. And it was always proportionate to the amount of coverage he was getting in the media. There was no other player at West Coast that, you know, copped the overhyped or, you know, overrated tag as much as Nick Nick Natanui and you know when it boils down to it Nick Natanui won three All-Australians as a ruckman he did win several games off his own boot he was a highlight reel and obviously you know had some weaknesses as well but on the balance of it all I wonder how many rucks have actually won three or more All-Australian jumpers in their career since you know maybe Dean Cox I actually didn't look that up but I'd imagine it's a minority and I'm not saying he's one of the best to ever do it what I'm actually saying is the criticism and anti-Nick Nat sentiment was disproportionate to how actually good he was as a player. And this is a direct result of the media doing what they do. So now it's happening with Harley Reid where people resent Harley Reid in a sense because of the West Australian, amongst others, doing what they do. And I'm starting to see it as well. Like, you know, I, after the preseason game, the amount of comments I've gotten specifically related to Harley Reid not being good. Now, don't get me wrong. I do realize there's an element of this where it's kind of fun banter, poking the bear, you know, people, you know, Fremantle fans, you know, commenting smart ass comments. I realize that's kind of just part of football and I'm not trying to demonize anyone doing that. But I don't think if it is a serious opinion that you hold that Harley Reid has demonstrated that he's not that good from one preseason game where he wasn't super impactful, it's not an opinion I can respect. I, I don't think it's well thought out and I don't think there's a single other player in the league that I would make that assessment of that early in his career. So it's interesting to consider like to what extent do the West Australian and the broader media have a responsibility here? I think that's a tough question to answer. I, I don't feel like I want to impart a responsibility on the West Australian on Harley Reid and stuff like that, but I can equally say that it's wrong to do what they're doing and, and dishonest. Like look at this particular article from a couple of days ago. So I'll get it up now on the screen. And it says Harley Reid Prince of Perth with a crown and it takes up a huge part of the back page. I like how Fremantle will just get a little box article. But can you guess what this article is about? It's because Oscar Allen jokingly in a press conference referred to him as the Prince of Perth. Now that's fine. Like it's not a big deal, but like, is that really worth half a back page? Like it, it, at some point the people doing this must realize God, I, I'm, I don't know if I can get away with this one. But yeah, it's annoying. As an Eagles fan, seeing the, the coverage on Harley Reid and the general football discussion out there that you find on the West Australian for the most part. And the unfortunate thing is, is we as viewers, they almost monopolize it a little bit. We kind of have no choice but to click on these West Australian articles because they have a, a level of access that we don't otherwise see. There's someone always going down to the training sessions, reporting on what's happening, getting insight, access to players for interviews. They do have that advantage, which means that to some extent, people are always going to be coming back but ultimately they live in a world that is driven by you know engagement and clicks and it's not just one person making a decision it's somebody that's accountable to, to someone on a higher level who's accountable to a higher level and everything's measured by clicks and engagement and, and whatever other metrics that they have thankfully you know in, in this growing you know unofficial content creator space you know, there are different ways to find access and you kind of have to know where to go. You know, you, you, I know that to, to find like good training reports on the Eagles, I go to Big Footy. Or sometimes, you know, people upload footage of the training or the inter-club inter matches or whatever, and that's on YouTube. But the West Australian kind of have everything in a centralized place, which makes it too convenient to completely ignore, but God, like they are not doing us a favor. And I'm sure Fremantle fans have the same opinion of the West Australian generally. And I gotta say, it's quite annoying. But that's just my Harley Reid take, guys. Again, it wasn't even so much a defense of him as a player. Like I said, I do think it's justified. Like if you actually have a belief that strongly that somebody's not going to be a good player because from what you've seen, and there are people saying that out there, I would urge you to reevaluate your process for making opinions. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.